Hi! Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm drawing with a November scroller box. They sent this um, frisk pad and um, a mechanical pencil, a clutch pencil, a graphite and two pastel pencils in black and white. The challenge is leading light and I just kept thinking of this statue, um, Michelangelo's David, and the way the light hits it and the shadows, and um, yeah, so I've decided to draw just a portion of it. I'm basically looking at the eyes. I'm starting with a mechanical pencil just because I find it easy to get the details in with a finer point and I plan to use the bigger ones later when it comes to shading. I like to start by figuring out the placement for things. Um, like the rough shape and size of the eyes and nose and where they're gonna go before taking the time to make them look like the eyes and the nose so um, this sketch is currently in the scary stage that every drawing goes through where it's gonna get worse before it gets better <laughs> I also find that putting down a rough shape for things helps me see what's wrong with them before I spend too much time. Like, for example, I've put down a rough nose. Um, I can see it's not exactly the right nose, but I haven't actually spent any time detailing it out. Um, when I was starting out drawing, I could spend ages drawing the most perfect nose only to realize that it's too big or too small for the face and I'd have to either start the nose or redo the whole face. So yeah, rough shapes really helpful for, um, for draft drawings before um, you add details. I'm now using the clutch pencil to add some rough patches of shading to the darkest areas. I uh, honestly thought I would like it, but um, I'm not finding it very comfortable. It's a nice soft um, lead, but uh, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm working on A5 and it's, it might be different um, on bigger paper and it's definitely easier to fill in um, bigger, bigger spaces of shading with it but um, yeah, maybe I'm just not used to it. I do have a clutch pencil but it's a much finer lead in it so I'm gonna give the graphite a go, see how that is. I think it's slightly lighter and um, Again, very chunky, not comfortable at all in my hand and not um, not convenient for getting into this tiny area. So again, maybe it's the size of the drawing that, um, that I'm struggling with. I had these pan pastel blender sticks on my desk. Um, so I decided to try and see if they work with pencil just because the area I'm trying to smudge is a little bit, um, it's very tiny and um, I mean I love, my actual favorite thing for blending is just a bit of tissue wrapped around my finger but that area is just too fine and I didn't have any um, uh, paper blender sticks handy so I'm just going with what I've got. I love seeing how the smallest addition of contrast actually um, starts to bring a drawing to life. And I'm kind of sticking with a mechanical pencil for now for both um, details and shading. Just like the feel of it in my hand better. And this one actually is a uh, 0.7, which is quite a wide um, point. I mean, I usually draw with a 0.3, so this is good. This is good for shading as well. 
I think uh, I might try the big ones again just for the really dark large areas later like in the forehead but for now mechanical pencil wins. I try not to work on any one area for too long. As I mentioned earlier, it's basically the same reason. I don't want to put too much detail in and then find something not matching. So move around, do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and then move on to a different area and just keep adding things little by little as I go. That way if I see something not, you know, not right, not matching, then I can kind of work on it as I go. I also find once I've moved in it away from an area, I notice flaws on it that I didn't see while I was working on it. So I sometimes just go back and fix it while I can see it and then move on. This little erase is probably my ultimately favorite art tool of all time. It's a Tombow Mono fine point. I have the wide point as well, which is also very handy, but the fine point for um, highlights and details and um, like I just added the um, light along the bottom edge of the eye or sometimes fine hairs, it is just irreplaceable. The light hits the statue very differently on both sides of his face, which um, adds to the very dramatic look that he ends up with. I feel like this needs more depth, but I like to do it in stages because it's easier to darken an area than it is to lighten it. And in order to avoid making mistakes, I'm um, just going to move around the face a little bit more and, um, yeah, just gain some perspective. using a clutch pencil again to work in larger areas of shadows and just to deepen some of the shadows I have. I do normally love working with pencils but I have to say this box has somewhat pushed me out of my comfort zone because um, well I've never really used chunky um, graphites or clutch pencils before so it's just uh, I suppose it's all down to what you're used to. I just realized I completely forgot I even had these pastel pencils to use as well. I don't normally use pastels on top of my um, regular pencils, but yeah, the black is, um, it gets a lot, a lot more depth than um, the graphite. And just when I think I'm done, there's always little things I find I need to touch up. 
I'm focusing a lot around the eyes because um, they're essentially what brings about the most emotion when you look at him because this is basically a colorless statue. It's made out of white marble. So everything you see is a play on light and shadows and the eyes kind of um, the thing that get your attention the most. So um, I focused a lot of the darkest areas around the eyes to, um, to bring them forward and make them pop out at you. Well, as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more random art. Thanks, see you soon.